reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on the height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay a hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God. Since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son, as Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did, and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord.
Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. With you. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them, along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we reflect back over the course of our lives, we recognize that we've all experienced various milestones. Obviously, the day of our birth. The day, perhaps, we got married, or in my case, got ordained. The day we started a new career. Or perhaps, less than pleasant milestones. The passing of a loved one we found out some bad news. Nonetheless, all these milestones in our lives have an impact. They change us and really define who we are. And on this second Sunday in Lent, we are presented with a very important milestone in the lives of our Lord's closest disciples. They were led up to the top of Mount Tabor. And before them, Jesus is transfigured a miraculous moment when he reveals his true identity, his glory as the Son of God. You could say it was an aha moment for those disciples where they fully recognized who Jesus was, truly a milestone for them. And in the Gospel, the Father speaks, and he only speaks in Matthew's Gospel two times, once when Jesus is baptized and the second time at the Transfiguration. And both times the Father says essentially the same thing. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. At that moment, he reveals that Jesus is the Son of Man, whose glory is beyond anything we can imagine. So Peter, James, and John, the closest disciples of Jesus, got that glimpse. And at first, it probably terrified them. It was quite a sight. But then at that moment, it began to make sense, and the meaning of the cross began to have greater significance. And yet, when they look back on this event of the Transfiguration later on, after experiencing the events of Good Friday, they recognize that those sufferings were not in vain. Now, my brothers and sisters, although we may not have a Transfiguration experience like that on Earth, as Catholics, the glory of Christ is revealed to us in many ways. It is revealed to us through our lived faith. But our eyes and hearts must be properly prepared and open to how God truly manifests himself. And at the Transfiguration, our Lord shows himself to be that glorious Savior. And it's recognized that he alone is the authority that we should listen to as his disciples. And how is it that in our lives, especially in this Lenten season, do we listen to Jesus? Well, perhaps it's through a simple inspiration after prayer. Perhaps it's through the goodness and charity we experience from someone else. Perhaps it's an encounter with the living God at the altar through receiving the sacraments. Perhaps it's an experience of having our sins forgiven through the sacrament of penance. In these ways, we confront the transfigured Lord. 
Maybe it's perhaps through a difficult situation, carrying a cross. Those crosses we know are not in vain. And ironically, they can draw us closer to God. And that too can be a transfiguration moment for us. So yes, the Lord is revealing his glory to us in our own day, within our own circumstances, even in amidst the darkness of the world, especially how dark it is now. So yes, the light of Christ, the power of Christ, conquers all things. And even though we must follow the Father's instruction to listen to him, his beloved Son, we must also be aware of the various obstacles that prevent us from listening to Christ. And yes, there are many. And there are many competing voices for authority. And there are three particular ones that I'd like to briefly focus on that we should be on guard against, especially in this Lenten season. The first is the voice of popularity. That is, we all want to seek praise and honor from the world. And yes, sometimes we care what other people think of us. It's just human nature. But if that goes too far, we can lose our focus on Christ. What most important is where we stand before God and how he will judge us in the end. So yes, sometimes this seek for worldly acceptance can lead us astray from the path that Christ has for us. The second voice is the voice of pleasure. And yes, we all have the desire for healthy pleasures. But at the same time, because of original sin, this can easily become disordered and out of balance. So if we let them go wherever we want, if we are truly guided by our passions alone, then yes, we can be enslaved to these instincts. And that will cut us off from listening to Jesus in our lives. Moderation is the virtue. St. Thomas Aquinas and even Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, spoke of this. It's through virtue that we find balance and we experience God. And the third competing voice is that of profit. Think of the three Ps. Popularity, pleasure, and profit. Yes, we all need financial security and stability, but yet it cannot become our God. And this is true with any material endeavor. Whatever things that we have in life are gifts from God, but they not, should not be the center of who we are. And yes, this could lead us astray. And I would add a fourth one. It's not in my text, but I think it's important in today's age, politics. Yes, politics can lead us astray in many different directions. We as Catholics are obedient to one source of truth, that is the magisterium of our church in Jesus Christ. So we all should be pursuing the truth, not political ideology. And ultimately, that will lead us on a path where we stand firm for life, where we stand up for the values of the human person, the unique dignity of every person. We seek the values that, yes, material goods are important, but they're not everything. So yes, Jesus must ground even our passions in this way. So on the second weekend of Lent, how is it that we are listening to Christ? And are we doing our part to remove those obstacles from truly listening to what the Lord has to say to us here and now? Pope Benedict once wrote, no one lives on Tabor while on earth. And yes, we'll all have glimpses here and there of God's glory. And every day he has something to show us usually through the ordinary circumstances of life. And yes, the transfiguration was a milestone in the life of those closest to Jesus and is a milestone in our lives of faith as well. And if we know if we strive to follow and listen to Jesus, then yes, we'll be on the path to the glory of heaven. There is no other way. So Jesus, who is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever, is the source of our peace, and he alone is the source of our strength. And may we strive each day to please him by striving to conform ourselves to his will and doing our part in growing in holiness and overcoming the obstacles that keep us from truly experiencing his love in our lives here and now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. All things and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, who Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested that he was going to show you by the So the powers of heaven 